Okay, guys, I'm going to share something that I think is pretty important and real that we've been lied to about. They ridiculed the Patterson film, but they never show you the whole film. They never actually show you the footprints of Patty that they recorded. That's undeniable and not made by a human of my height. I'm 6'3", and I could not make those distance of steps. This video is coming from Sasquatch Archives. Y'all should go over there and give them some screws. Subscribe and like their films. They put a lot of work into this research. But they have hid the truth from us. This is the real footage of that day. And it shows footprints. Undeniable, real animal footprints. At the end of this film, I will show you a metal detector that has great audio of what I think the, is a real Bigfoot encounter. Please stay and watch the film till the end. We're going to start the film now. On October 26th, 1967, Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin were interviewed on radio by Jack Webster in Vancouver following the showing of the Patterson-Gimlin film at the University of British Columbia that same evening. Researcher John Green had a copy of the interview in his cassette collection. John graciously permitted Todd Prescott to make a copy of the recording. Until now, and after a long 53 years, the interview had not been made public. The significance of the Patterson-Gimlin interview is quite profound because it's a then-current snapshot of the men's recollection of the afternoon of October 20th, 1967. The audio is a bit inconsistent at the beginning, but gets better soon into the interview. It is hoped that you enjoy this snapshot of Sasquatch Bigfoot research history. Please do subscribe to the channel and hit that notification button. Fifty-three years later, here's the Patterson-Gimlin interview. I've been interviewing eyewitnesses of Sasquatch sightings, Sasquatch themselves, since 1954. And I might as well tell you that uh, the first time I've been what you might call really impressed. I saw the film taken by Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin near Eureka, California, on Friday afternoon, the 20th of October. And I'll tell you... Is like a polite witness of a flying saucer, a personal one. Well, Roger was kind of excited, but it shows quite clearly a huge, human-like, fur-covered creature striding along a, a, a creek bed in a most distinctive manner. I think you can see honestly from the film that the creature is feet. When it comes sideways, you can see the mammary glands. You can see and the hips butt. appear to be <laughs> massive thickness right through. And my immediate reaction was, you know, it's a phony. And then you begin to think about it, and you think, if that's you wearing a costume, your butt crack. it's the most unusual costume, because there's no sagging, no bulging, no nothing. And then the footprints are there. The actual footprints of this creature. That's why they hide the footprints, because it's country. real. They wanted to debunk it so right away. It's a heavy creature. And this is a very tall man carrying a, hell of, a, a great deal of lead weight around his shoulders. However, here's the man that took the picture. Roger Patterson from Yakima. Now, Roger, you get to that place, and precisely where was it, and why did you go there? Well, first of all, uh, the reason that we were in this place is uh, I've been filming a documentary on this thing for the past eight months or so, and uh, I've been going to areas uh, interviewing people that have seen these creatures, other than uh, myself now, and uh, uh, we had went to this particular area because a month before this they had found uh, 
three different sets of tracks up in that area. Now, come back to your first of all, you showed some routine film of your pack horses, didn't right, you? Right. Now, what were you doing filming at that particular time on the pack horse bit? Well, we had uh, uh, hadn't taken any, uh, and I thought right of that particular area there before, and uh, there was an area right in there. There was some of these. You were just taking odd shots then, just, wasn't Just it? taking some shots of the scenery and of, of myself and, and, and Bob uh, in right, that area. Now, well, just jump to what you first saw that made you excited. All right, we came, rounded a bend in the road. You were walking? No, we were riding. You were on a horse. Riding on horses. Where was your camera? The camera was in, the, in my saddlebags on the left hand side. Right, who was we? Bob Gimlin and myself. Bob's right here, right? right? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So you're riding on the horses, your camera's in the sandalbag, you come around the bend, and then what happens? All of a sudden, I caught something out of the, uh, glimpse out of the corner of my eye, and my horse immediately reared on me, and I was, I tried to pull him down, and at, the, at this instant after I seen the object to the side, I wasn't able to see it again for a, a little bit. It fell with me, I probably pulled him half over, and as, I, as he got up, I was able to get up and control him until I went around the other side, and uh, got the camera out of the saddlebag, and then I turned my horse loose and uh, was able to start shooting. And I oh, just a minute. You, turned your, you got off your horse and turned it loose. Right. Well, uh, my horse, no, I was, I was already off my horse. Right. I was on the ground underneath him. Okay, you got your camera, turned your horse loose. Right. Then you looked up, and what did you I see? I looked up, and I seen this, this uh, creature about uh, 120 away, and she was, uh, at that point, uh, had just had turned around and was just going up the bank, uh, this uh, small bank over there, and I st started running and trying to get a shot of her, and I yelled at Bob to cover me. Where was Bob? Where were you then, Bob? Bob, get me. I come up. I was directly behind Roger, mounted on the horse that I was riding on, and uh, also when, the, when uh, this creature, we sighted this creature, my horse frightened from it too, but he was an older seasoned horse, and I controlled him quite well because I stayed in the saddle. And I did cover Roger at the time he told me to cover him, and I all... What do you mean, cover him? I took my rifle from the scabbard, from the saddle, and uh, in the event that this uh, creature would attack, uh, I felt that I could protect him somewhat. Did you have your on the creature all the time? Uh, most of the time, when I didn't have him on the ground where I had to, trying to control the horse on, it was a little bit unlevel. And was it, what was the creature then doing when you first saw it? When I first saw it, it was standing, looking straight at me. Face on. Face on. Describe it to me, brother. Uh, it was a large, uh, hairy creature with uh, arms that hang down uh, beside its, be you know, four down on its sides, below its knees, and it was quite... Would you agree with that? Well, I think I think Bob's a little excited here. I don't... They were below the knees. They were above the knees. Well, but they were well down on yeah, the thighs, they were weren't they? Way down, right. Because I could and, see that on the film tonight. Yeah. They were well down on the thighs. And uh, she was heavy, although uh, I had no way of estimating her weight at that time, and uh, only guessed since then. But uh, uh, she turned then, she stood there for an instant, and she turned and started up over this bar. Now, when you looked at it, describe her physically to me. Was there uh, any, any shred of clothing of any kind? Uh, no clothing at all on this creature, covered with hair only, except around the face and nose. The nose was bare, and around the cheeks, uh, were bare. What kind of nose did it have? It had a broad, flat nose. With like a gorilla's nose with the open nostrils? No, 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 not like that. The nostrils, you could not see down. They Would you agree with that? of human-type nose? That's right. What about the lips? Uh, the lips, I never really noticed uh, that much at that particular time when she was face on to me because she just stood there for an instant and turned and walked away with her, uh, started walking away. Any sound at all? No. Now, what about the physical characteristics, her figure? Uh, she was kind of uh, slumped and uh, uh, very heavily through the, well, her entire body was heavy and... Uh, were the breasts visible? They were visible. Were they uh, covered with hair? Were covered with hair. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the proportions of the body, was it like a giant human? Yes, I, I, it seemed to be, to me, more like a, a, a giant man, except it had breasts. Uh, this was one thing that, uh, I mean, her characteristics, and, and the anthropologists and zoologists this evening brought this out, that this, it seemed to be more like a, a, a huge uh, uh, man. Uh, she, in other words, she didn't have a, a narrow waist and a, and a, and a big, uh, big set of hips 
like uh, uh, that we would think of as a, as a woman. And when it strode away from the camera, it walked very much like a huge, big, strong man, didn't it? Well, it did. Uh, however, I would uh, make the estimate uh, that, uh, or the, the judgment, I might say, that, that a, a, a female of this kind wouldn't look very female uh, under the environment that she would maybe have to... Uh, Bob, how did you feel when you saw it? Do you think somebody was pulling a gag on you? Uh, no, not really. It just uh, it was surprising, and uh, we talked about these things many times, and actually talked what we would do if we happened to see one. Now, before we finish the chase, you had your rifle out the scabbard. What kind of rifle was it? Thirty out six rifle. And you can use a rifle, obviously. Yes, I can. I had grown Would up. Would it be worth a hundred thousand dollars cash to you if you had raised that rifle and shot this creature? You must have known that. I don't believe I could do it. Even if you just wounded. Well, uh, that like mess. Roger, hey? that, that would be a, a mess. A mess. Uh, to both Bob and I, we had agreed that uh, we, we will not shoot one of these creatures unless she would attack us or that we would be protecting our lives. Uh, I, I think that we would have to fear for our own lives if we were to wound and, and make a terrible mess out of something like right. this. Right. So finally, I'm back to Roger Patterson again, when you got your camera steadied. Uh, did you stand still and take the pictures I saw, or did you follow it on foot? <clears throat> her, we should say follow her on foot. I, I followed it on foot because uh, this was the only way that I had. I knew this situation, uh, of course, at, at the time, and I, I could see her moving away from me, and I knew Bob was there, and I thought, uh, if I'm ever going to get any pictures, I'll have to do it now. And I ran uh, as best I could and, and trotted. Uh, you How might close say. did you get the closest? Well, I think we were closer when we first seen her than any other time, don't you, Bob? No, I disagree with you there. I believe just immediately after we got across the creek, we were probably closer to her at that time than we were when we first sighted her because uh, she had her back to us at that time, and uh, or at least I was closer because I ran a little farther up on the horse. I was moving pretty fast, and I got him finally across the creek. So I believe at that time when I crossed the creek, I was the closest I ever was to her, and I believe it was about 90 feet at that time. Now, Roger, how far did you, did you notice the colors of the palms of the hands? Or were you close enough for that? Uh, I was, but I never noticed. Mm. Now, how far did you follow her? I, I didn't follow her any much further than when my camera uh, ran out of film, and I, and I knew that it was out, and Bob got on his horse and went after her then, uh, and... From that point, he, he seen her more than I did. I never seen her well, again. How far were you able to follow her? Uh, I watched her until she went up a road about 300 yards, and uh, she uh, went around and in the road, and that was the last I seen of her. Mm -hmm. Now, after all this dreadful excitement, what did the pair of you do? Here you for the, after all these hundreds of years of rumors and sightings and all the rest of it, all up and down the Pacific Northwest and in Michigan and Hudson and everywhere else, what did you do when you're standing there, you've recovered from the shock with a camera full of film? I mean, just tell me precisely what you did at that time. What well, did you say to each other? Well, I, when Bob come back, I, I yelled for him, Bob, come back, uh, because at, at this point my horse was, I didn't know where, uh, and the pack horse was gone. My scabbard, and my rifle was in the scabbard on the horse, and uh, uh, the, the tracks before, uh, down in there that we had heard about were in a set of three and there was a bigger one there and I felt that possibly there was a male in close in You were area. getting nervous. I was getting nervous. And then you were on foot there without your rifle. I was on foot without anything uh, and uh, uh, I yelled for Bob to come back and uh, uh, we would think the thing over. And, and was that the time you broke off the chase you might say? Right, that was when I, when I last seen her go around the curve. And uh, at that time, I went back and, and proceeded to gather up Roger's horses, or his horse that he was riding in the pack horse. And uh, after, then what? after chasing him up and down the road for a little while and finally catching him, well, we talked it over, and I said I'd check around and see if maybe that uh, I could find some tracks where she had come into this area and possibly sight the other one. So I took the camera while he uh, uh, gathered up his stuff and... and uh, and you just, scouted around for a while, did right, you? Yeah, yeah. Then when did you make the... Now, were you able to identify specifically the tracks she had made while you were There's following her? Tracks. Yes, because uh, immediately after we went across the... 
And uh, immediately Those after I called Bob back, guys. we they won't looked at the tracks, and they were the, the tracks they don't were there. These are the tracks the track. we saw in the movie That's tonight. Right. That's right. The tracks for which you had the plaster cast right. tonight. Mm -hmm. oh, How yeah. come you had plaster cast with you? We didn't plaster have, with you. We didn't have plaster of Paris uh, with it. We had to go back to the to the uh, truck and and uh, and get plaster and, and come up and and cast them. How long would that take you to leave the scene, go back to the well, truck, and come up again? We were at that point about two. Uh, what, uh, is it two miles from that area? Yeah, two about, about two miles, I'd say. Uh, by the road, it was just about an even That's two really miles hard across to fake the hill. The that way, it was a little shorter, but we went through Now, that. okay. Never seen that on took the plastic TV. tracks. They How deep were these tracks, tracks, by the way, in inches? Inch and a quarter here. Uh, some of them were uh, down as far as three and a half the, the softer soil. These particular ones we took here were, uh, weren't quite so deep because they were flatter tracks. All right, now, have any of the zoologists or the people you consulted, have they given you any idea of the weight of this creature? No. Or the height of the weight? They did on the height, measuring uh, by those of her feet in the picture, and uh, they estimated her height to be approximately uh, six foot nine inches. What was this, the length of the stride? Th this, uh, pardon me, but uh, this, this was estimated on a 14 and a half inch, uh, excuse me, a 14 inch track, and these, this, these were 14 and a half inches, uh, which would... Uh, uh, would would add quite a considerable bit to... I wear a 14 cadence, shoe. I believe that's My foot is 12 technical inches. Description. She averaged a 41-inch stride, uh, uh, somewhere the, uh, thereabouts. Uh, she was taking uh, she to a 46-inch stride. So I was 3 feet 5 to 12 feet 36, 12 foot 48. 3 feet 5 to 3 feet 10. Yes. Oh, goodness gracious me. And of course, this, there must be lots course. of them around there. I mean, what, what would they be doing down at the creek? Well, they're in this creek. Uh, we we didn't fish it, but we seen them jumping, and and I, uh, I I I could only surmise what she was either drinking or, or possibly trying to catch fish in, in the in the creek. Any sign of fish? There's lots of fishes around. In, Any other tracks of the animal? Uh, oh. There was no no uh, no uh, uh, droppings at all. That's the word I was looking for. Well, now what? You're going to sell this film to the highest bidder? Well, we uh, we just haven't. Uh, we haven't made any definite plans, but I would imagine that we will. Uh, what they were ridiculed their whole life. How can you afford to take all this Bob's time off to get out? Oh, no, no, no. First of all, how long have you been looking for Sasquatch? Live Sasquatch? Well, uh, off and on for about they seven videoed, and a half years. They videoed a real creature, but, uh, and they uh, were shut The last four down. years, I've made a lot much more of an effort than uh, any other time. You're financially independent. Well, somewhat. Yes. Now, but you, you can go out this kind of cable without suffering too much financially. Well, uh, it's been it's been tough. Why has nobody ever found any bones of these uh, Sasquatch down in that Bigfoot country where there have been reports of so many tracks? Well, uh, not only down in that country, but there's been tracks all over the Northwest and Canada, as you well know, in Canada. Uh, yeah. uh, but uh, they seem, I, I think anyway, this, uh, this maybe doesn't agree with all of the fellas that's been involved in this, but uh, they seem to dwell primarily in the rainforest, or they can get to the rainforest fairly easy. And the uh, bones uh, in, this, in this type of climate, in a rainforest climate, don't last uh, very long. Do you realize, boys, Bob, G Bob Gilman and, and Roger Patterson, that our people are going to say you're total nuts? You know that, don't you? You're held up to ridicule by some people. Well, uh, I've taken quite a bit of this in the past, and uh, it, it uh, doesn't uh, surprise me. I know they're there, and I know that we're going to get one in the next possibly five to to 10 years or maybe sooner uh -huh. and when we do uh, I think there's going to have to be many uh, people and also scientists maybe a little crow. Now uh, you said they're vegetarians eh? I, I don't think that they're solely vegetarians. You think they go for fish like bear no. would go for fish? I think that they they will will eat what they have to to keep alive and uh, I think that in some areas if they can get enough vegetation they, they probably... Thanks for watching. Okay guys one more Bigfoot section here. This is a metal detector from Fairbanks, Alaska. Metal detecting in Alaska with Keith. Go over and pay him a visit. He's got some great metal detecting videos. But while he's metal detecting a Bigfoot, I would say at least two of them screamed at him. One is much closer, throwing stuff in the creek, but the audio is chilling. Check it out. Getting dark on me. Down to my last target. Looks like a little wood or what's that? You hear the whoop. 
Whoa, did you guys, did you guys, did you guys hear, hear that? It sounded like something howling. I still hear it. it. I feel like it's real, guys. Sweet, Sweet little box. box. Boy, Boy, that, that freaked, freaked me out. out. All right, so I'm working my way back. Whoa, did you hear that? Oh man, something, something just threw something in the water right beside me. I always carry a gun. Oh, jeez. All right, guys, let's get out of here. I just threw something else in the water just now. All right, I'm finally getting close to the road. Whew, that scared the crap out of me. Let's get back to the house and get ready for the roundup. That was pretty intense screaming there with the whoop at the end. My native friends have some great stories of something that is out there. Our gov lies to us about everything. I want y'all to know that. The school system has indoctrinated y'all to believe everything the government says. That is a bad way to think that they're not out to hurt us <clears throat> or they really don't care about us because they don't think for yourselves don't let them tell you how to think Bigfoots are real in my personal worthless opinion commercial fishermen out